it's time for... Welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Today's video, we're here to talk about the care and keeping of the Sungaya inexpectata. So here we have an adult female specimen of the Sungaya inexpectata. These guys are more commonly known as the sunny stick insect. Their PSG number meaning Phasmid study group number, is 195. Specimens of these wonderful Phasmids were first described in 1996 by the author Zompro. These Phasmids are found in the Philippines and they come in variants of colours. The specimens I have have the white stripe going right from the tip of the head to the tip of the abdomen, as you can see here. But other specimens can have white patches going sideways along their body and others don't have the white stripe at all. So don't be confused if your Sungaya inexpectata looks nothing quite like mine in pattern. Now as you can see here, mine feed from bramble but these are actually really easy phasmids to keep due to the huge amount of food plants these guys will happily take. So if you struggle to find bramble they will also take to hawthorn, chestnut, raspberry, willow, ivy, beech, hazel, salal, hornbeam, and even butterfly bush. Although I'm actually not quite sure what butterfly bush is. One way to distinguish this species, if you can't tell by coloration alone, is the almost warty type crown they have on their heads. As you can see from this specimen, just poking up from the back of the head there, is the crown that I'm talking about. Now if we take a close look at the abdomen, that spike along the bottom is a sort of overpositor. Now this is used as the Sungaya need to push that over into the soil. So I always recommend to have at least five centimetres of damp soil in your enclosure. Cocoa fibre is fine, or well, you can even use sand, but sand doesn't hold as high a humidity. You can see just by the end of the abdomen the strength that will be used to push it in. That bulbous end to the abdomen and the thick long parts leading up the body there which will then curve round almost like a scorpion to push and bury over. It has been known that in older cultures of Sungaya they stop actually burying their over and some actually take happily to pushing it into corners of cages and in leaves. However I wouldn't recommend this as it could cause them stress or maybe even damage to their abdomen. So please, if you can't fill the bottom of the enclosure with your soil, at least have a dish so they have the choice to lay in it. Now as I mentioned this is an adult female and she reaches about 8 centimetres in length. Now it is still a bit of a myth that you do not get males because in fact Sangaya and Expectata are parthenogenic, meaning they can have fertilized over laid without the need of a male. But I'm going to bust the myth about there being no males of these for you right now. Ta-da! Here is an adult male Sungaya inexpectata. Now you can see that these are sexually diamorphic meaning you can easily tell apart males from female. This male is around six centimeters in length, very slender with slight chunks around the mid legs there. He too has obtained the stripe in his culture, but as I said, not all of them will have this. For the sake of comparison, here is the adult female, and if I just focus in down here, here is the mature male. You can see how much more slender he is here, and you can see that his colorations are slightly darker, even in the stripe it's slightly more yellowish than it is white. Now as you can see I've startled the male a bit and he's climbed on the female. 
Now, if you do notice a male on the back of the female, do not be alarmed. For they do this for mating. The male will happily sit on the back of the female for up to several days at a time. Of course, not like this. This is just him startling and running over her. But he will lay head end to head end, abdomen to abdomen, to connect the end of his abdomen and deposit sperm inside of hers. Like most phasmids, they will wiggle to imitate the wind. This is a sign of defence so that they can mimic the wind and the rustling leaves. So of course, they're harder to spot by predators. They kind of look like they're dancing, don't they? That's one thing I love about stick insects. They do their groovy dance moves. Can anyone spot anything different on this soil ledge? There's a mixture of soil itself, a bit of poo, but what's this? This little black looking bomb is the ova of the Sungaya inexpectata. Now ova is the correct term for a stick insect egg. Now their eggs take roughly four to six months to hatch, longer if it's a parthenogenic only species. Now the great thing about these is they actually have a roughly 90% hatch rate, meaning that out of 100 over, 90 are likely to emerge from the egg. This is incredibly high, making them very suitable for serious breeders. But you also do not want to be overpopulated, for this causes them stress and you will have a lot more fatalities. So if you want to avoid that, you can either sell on your eggs, pass them on, or freeze them to dye them off. Some stick insect eggs are also happily eaten by fish. Seems to have a stray ladybird crawling across their enclosure. Something that sometimes happens when you bring in bramble. Now this cylinder here is the home I have for my Sungaya. Now this cylinder would not be suitable for lots and lots of adults, but I have two females and one male that live in here. Soil at the bottom is kept moist at all times. Now rather than misting everywhere in this enclosure, I usually just mist the bottom. When a room gets warm, the water will evaporate upwards. And I sometimes mist the leaves too, but I avoid hitting the actual insects themselves. Now my tank is over 30 centimetres tall, which is fine for the amount I have in here. The lowest size tank that I would recommend for you would be no shorter than 24 centimetres tall. The 24 centimetres is three times the length of an adult Sungaya. It's always important to make sure that you have three times the length of your phasmid in height at all times for successful molting. Now I tend to keep these at at least 70% humidity at all times, but I would like to increase it now and again to around 75 or 80. However, the good thing about this species is they are quite hardy. So if they do go through a dry spell, if you have forgotten to mist them, don't panic. They're likely to still be okay. At least they will when they're older. Nymphs, on the other hand, I make sure keep high humidity at all times. To maintain a decent amount of humidity, just add less ventilation. I have not actually placed any vent holes in the sides of this acrylic tank. Instead, I have ventilation only on the top lid. If you did want to add ventilation, I would add it at the bottom so the airflow goes through into the soil and then will help with the evaporation upwards and increasing the moisture. But as I said, don't panic too much because these guys are hardy, making them perfect for beginners. Also notice how they are completely and utterly wingless in both females and males. Now you'll quite often find in the stick insect world but sometimes females aren't winged and males are. This helps the males go in search for the females. And sometimes both have wings. Now to wrap this video up, I would make these guys a 2 out of 10 for difficulty rating. The only reason it's not a 1 is for the fact that they will do better under slightly more humid conditions. Especially being from the Philippines. A lot of Southeast Asian species will require higher humidity levels. But as I said, they can do okay with drier spells. The other reasons for my scoring were all things mentioned in this video, such as the fact that being wingless makes them easier to handle, 
They also have no defensive mechanism except to drop and play dead. So these guys are perfectly fine around your children. They cannot fly off, they cannot attack you, they cannot bite you, and if they do, you would barely even feel it. High success rate for breeding, and not too big either. So if you're looking for a beginner stick insect that isn't your typical Indian stick insect, maybe the Sangaya inexpectata is the one for you. And if you want to see what else dwells within the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. I hope you enjoyed my care sheet on the Sangaya inexpectata, and if you have any further questions, please just leave them in the comments below. Also, if you would like more videos like this, please let me know that in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you think this might help others, please share my video across social media platforms. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. Bye bye.